Good morning, welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. This is BRN AM for Wednesday, April 24th, 2024. Joining me now to discuss this and a lot more, Ryan Grosdidier is with SSNC Technologies. Ryan, it's great to see you again. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate the opportunity. And and last time, I, I'm saying we're going on about a year or so, to maybe two years. We started the conversation about retirement income. Let's let's get an update from you. Where where do we stand right now with the adoption of retirement income solutions in defined contribution plans? Adoption is definitely picking up, um, but I think that's going to accelerate dramatically as uh, record keepers um, come online with their programs. There was a large record keeper that made an, a significant announcement a couple of weeks back, and I think that there's going to be others that will follow. So you can use the comparison. You could go to the store. The product that you you may want is not on the shelf. I think that's where we kind of have been with retirement income. There's a lot of good solutions out there, good product out there, but they haven't yet become available on the record keeper shelf. So that's starting to happen. Um, and I think as that accelerates, and as we get to uh, kind of uh, industry norm adoption level, it's gonna make it even easier for people to get access. And that's where I think to your question, the adoption is really gonna pick up and accelerate. Yeah, and, and you talked about some uh, record keepers, I think, partnering to create with, with uh, SSNC to um, put these opportunities out there. Uh, I guess there's a lot of momentum um, out there amongst record keepers, but also the advisor community who serve as uh, important fiduciaries for a lot of these retirement plans. Yes. So I think that advisors, consultants are an important part. They're, they're a catalyst for adoption at, at the plan level, for sure. Um, so as they get more comfortable, educated on these solutions, how they work, what fits the, the, the needs of the various plan sponsors, that's going to help move it along. And I think to your, your first question, I think as record keepers are, are setting up their programs, they're leveraging technology providers um, to enable kind of a one-to-many connection so they don't have to connect individually to all of the different products out there. And there's, there's a number of them. And I think that's important because uh, particularly for the for the larger record keepers, they're going to have different needs from different plans. And even within a large plan, the need of a 22 year old that's just coming into the firm versus somebody that's uh, approaching retirement, their needs <laughs> are very, very different. Right. And the types of solutions they're going to need is very different. So to, there's not going to be a single solution that's going to meet the needs of everybody, much like there's not a single fund you have more than one fund on a menu, you're going to need to have multiple solutions available. And maybe a plan isn't going to adopt every single one, but they at least need to be able to have choice to pick the products that best suit, suit the needs of their individual participants. Yeah, I like that you bring up personalization. And, you know, are, is there a default implementation focus for customers? I mean, whether it's the record keeper or the plan sponsor, how are they thinking about, for example, uh, the QDA, the QDIA, the Qualified Default Investment Account, how are they incorporating managed accounts in, into this conversation? Yes, uh, great point. I think um, about two thirds of the assets, according to recent Cerulli data, come into um, plans via QDIA, right? And uh, in, into target date funds via the QDIA. And I think to, for us as an industry to think that retirement income adoption flows are going to be different than how uh, traditional flows come in is just not the correct approach. So these solutions have to be defaulted in some form or fashion. Uh, so obviously the QDIA would be the biggest, uh, but there's other ways that you could get default-like access into these solutions. There could be a paternalistic uh, plan that wants to put in an employer match, profit sharing, um, and they feel it's in the best interest of their participants to get access to these products through those programs. Um, and then through managed accounts as well. And I think that's where the personalization comes in, the ability to pull in outside assets, pension, account for social security as well, and really provide that holistic retirement plan, as opposed to just a kind of a, a single focused age 
retirement based uh, target date type of solution. So I think that we're we're definitely moving in that direction. And again, um, technology, being able to, to analyze data, pull data in, that's important, uh, a really important factor to enabling all of that. Yeah. And last question before we go to a commercial break, let's talk about portability. Because when a long time ago, when I had hair and I was a consultant, the portability issue was a big issue. How do I, as a plan sponsor, if I move record keepers, think about portability? And then if I'm a participant and I leave the plan, that's important to me as an individual. How has the industry and, and some of these technological solutions we're talking about this morning, how has it helped with addressing some of those issues? Is it still an issue? Yes. So traditionally it had been a, a large issue. So most of the products came out, they were proprietary. So they, they really couldn't be moved. Um, they were, and when I say proprietary, it was a record keeper that traditionally had an asset manager and an insurer, and they created these products and they made them available within their record keeping platforms. Now we have more third party products um, coming to market, non-proprietary. So it's not just the record keeper. Uh, there's other other players in the industry, asset managers, insurers, and even consortiums coming together to uh, to bring these products to market. So Secure 1.0 um, really addressed participant portability. So you could you can it's now required to provide portability if you're leaving the plan out to a participant to maintain those benefit values. That's that's law. That's a requirement. I think the other and, and technology is enabling. Uh, a more seamless uh, flow for the participant to get from point A to point B, maintain those benefits, and and continue to get access to the product they initially initially bought into. On the plan side, uh, back to the proprietary, there is a concern. Even if I bought into one of these solutions, I would then get locked in with that record keeper, and. Uh, forever. And if I tried to leave, then it would be really messy for my participants um, yeah. to maintain those benefits, right? So now utilizing technology and those one-to-many connections I, I spoke to before, you have a single entity that's sitting on those guaranteed benefit values. And as that plan chooses to move from record keeper A to record keeper B, they're simply porting those benefits over uh, you know, and the product has to be available as well on, on, in both of those situations. But able, allowing that that ability to port those benefits over, maintain the product in the same way that it had occurred on Record Keeper A onto Record Keeper B, which is really important. And that's helping a, a lot of advisors and consultants get over that hurdle because they, they learned new about these first generation products and they didn't want to get their their uh, clients locked into a single relationship. It's just, it's not in their best interest. Yeah, uh, really important. And that continuity also, uh, you know, in terms of moving over to the new record keeper, if you're a participant, being able to look at that statement and make sure you have all your ducks in one row, really important. Ryan, I need to take a very quick break. When we come back, we'll talk more about retirement income solutions. You're gonna wanna stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses. I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But well, you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't 
retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Welcome back. We're joined this morning by Ryan Gross Didier of SSC Technologies. Ryan, thanks so much for staying with us this morning. Really appreciate you hanging around for segment number two. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, and I, I got to personally say, I'm so excited when I see momentum on very key initiatives. Uh, it, it seems to me from the outside looking in um, that people are really interested in retirement income, both the fiduciary, the plan sponsor, and the participant. But I want to ask, what, what do participants want? Uh, what are you hearing? What are your clients hearing in terms of what these individuals want for their financial future? Sure. I think ultimately what they want is what was taken away from them, what was a uh, defined benefit pension. They want to be able to know how much money they're going to get. That was typically via check that was sent out to them. Um, so a lot of these solutions are really replicating the best parts of DB and bringing in the best parts of DC. I don't think we're going back to a world where people are going to work 30 or 40 year careers, be able to vest those benefits and then draw, be able to benefit from that, that pension check that, that comes to them. I think that ship has sailed. So you will sometimes hear people talk about, Hey, we need to bring back DB. That's just not going to work in the, the modern uh, labor force. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. We, we're not going to go back to the way things were. Let's talk a little bit about how, how are retirement income solutions analogous to the target date fund market? And if you remember back, this is before the Pension Protection Act, the target date fund was created. There really wasn't a lot of clamoring like, hey, I need a multi-asset solution. Most plans had you know the S&P 500, they had a balanced fund, but, but no one was really clamoring. Yet here we are, you know, 30 years, well, 20 plus years later, and the TDF is the target day fund is one of the more popular asset classes in these plans. Absolutely. And that's a comparison that's often made. Um, target dates didn't take off after the Pension Protection Act that allowed them to, to happen immediately. It took some time, um, much like you had Secure 1.0. That was a large catalyst. The challenge, though, is shortly after that, it was the pandemic. You had the CARES Act. Then you had Secure 2.0. So a lot of the resources that would have been uh, utilized to build retirement income programs were diverted elsewhere, unfortunately. So now we're finally to the point where those resources are coming back and we're able to move forward with these solutions on the platforms. Let's talk about the gatekeepers, the fidu I'll call them the fiduciary gatekeepers. That's the consultancy advisors, the legal, um, the, the attorneys that support these plans. Their aversion, or, you know, I'm, I'm painting with a broad brush and I don't mean to do that, but there has been some aversion. They're actually coming around and now they they believe in these types of products and, and they see the value uh, based on everything we talked about in segment one, portability, um, getting at the paycheck for life, right? So how are they coming about? They're less risk averse now. Sure. And I think about 90% of what uh, my colleagues, peers in the industry do is education. So explaining the differences, you may have been familiar with a, a first generation retirement income product that was proprietary, didn't have portability, didn't check a lot of the boxes that I think the advisors and consultants were looking for. Um, so now we, we're, we've kind of gotten past um, some of those challenges and getting these products out in the marketplace. And now people are able to, to move forward and and really position these these products in the way that they should be. And it's a, it's a positive story. Um, participants, plan sponsors need to offer these solutions because we've done a great job of helping people accumulate, but we kind of leave them to, to their own devices um, for decumulation or drawing down those assets. And they need a lot of help. And a lot of these solutions are going to help them um, draw down those assets in a way that that makes sense. It's personalized. And um, I, I think the plan, the plan sponsors, the advisors and consultants are all moving in that direction because of all of those reasons. Yeah, all part of that momentum we talked about in segment one. Ryan, I always like to talk about success stories and case studies. Have any to share where either a plan, 
a plant sponsor, an advisor, or even a record keeper, uh, and we don't have to name particular names, but maybe some high level success stories where there was an implementation that went really well, and now participants are partaking and they're getting the value that they've always sought in terms, in terms of getting that pension-like benefit. Absolutely. There's been some products that have been successful and have been in the market for a long time. Um, it's enabled participants to stay in the market because they're they're less concerned about markets ups and downs because they know that they have a guaranteed so, a guarantee. So there's a lot of good research out there on that. I think that will continue to carry forward. I know at an aggregate level, uh, we have several platforms and record keepers um, on our system, on our uh, technology platform. And we've gone over the past couple of years from, you know, tens of millions of assets up to over a billion, right? So still a small, a small piece of, uh, of a large market. But again, going back to what we were talking about earlier, as the large record keepers launch these programs, there's more wide availability of the solutions. Um, that number is only going to increase. And again, it really comes back to the, to the need of the participants. There's a there's a drastic need for retirement income solutions in the marketplace. We just have to continue to work as an industry to make those available in the way that participants want. Yeah, absolutely. And as a Gen Xer nearing his retirement, it's not not that close to my you know to now, but you know maybe 10, 15 years. I like the way things are going in terms of the evolution of these products and the technology that kind of builds around it. Ryan, we're going to have to leave it there, but I know we're going to be talking to you again very soon. Thanks so much for joining us and we look forward to having you back on the program again very soon. Thanks, Jeff. Really appreciate it. And that wraps up this episode of BRN AM. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to, then drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the latest curated news and lifestyle, wellness, finance, deck, so much more and all in one place, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to search our archives, check out our latest content, then visit our website. Hey, we're back again tomorrow for another edition of BRN AM. We we'll have a very important topic and, of course, a very special guest. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device.